Hey guys, so today's topic is a bit different from what I usually speak about here on the channel, but I think it is very relevant as we are entrepreneurs, as we are businessmen, as and as we are in the business of making money, right? So, so I'm going to be talking about why your phone is making you poor or why your phone is the reason that you're not achieving and completing the goals that you want to achieve here in life. Okay guys, so the short answer is dopamine. And now let me explain what I mean by this, okay? So I recently read a Harvard study that compared um, the dopamine releases you get from using your phone uh, to the dopamine releases you actually get from uh, completing beneficial tasks in life, okay? So that could be completing a good chunk of work or making a valuable social interaction, right? Making new friends, making new, uh, you just new important valuable interactions with like socially. So by nature, and this is, I quote, I, I don't quote, but this is what I read in the Harvard study, right? By nature, dopamine, the the, the chemical dopamine is designed to be released in your brain when you actually create, uh, perform these valuable tasks. And the reason it's released is you get addicted to dopamine, right? So the whole point of these dopamine releases is that when you, when you perform these uh, beneficial tasks, when you perform these tasks that are actually valuable to yourself, you get a release of dopamine, you get a dopamine stimulant, and as you get addicted, you are gonna be performing these valuable, these, um, these beneficial tasks on a regular basis because obviously you get uh, addicted, but not in a bad way because if you're addicted to doing something that's good for you, then that's a good thing, right? However, with the invention of phones and the whole digital world, dopamine has completely changed forms, right? Because you get immense dopamine releases from using your phone. And when I say phone, I'm more precisely, I'm talking about social media like Facebook and Instagram and ent entertainment services like Netflix. Uh, I don't know if you're watching Netflix on your phone or your computer, it's virtually the same. Um, but I kind of want to talk about Instagram and Facebook, in particular Instagram, okay? So I see so many of my friends that are scrolling Instagram hours and hours on end, okay? That are just scrolling their feed and I kind of, you, you, you can compare this and it's, it, I, I, I read this in the Harvard study as well, sorry for studying. I read this in the Harvard study as well. You can compare scrolling on Instagram to uh, a jackpot machine in a casino, okay? Because when you're pulling that lever on the jackpot machine or you're pressing that button on your jackpot machine and you're seeing these those wheels spin, your brain is releasing so many dopamines as you're seeing the wheel spin and you're hoping to win the jackpot prize in this machine, right? And let's assume that you play on this machine for like five hours straight, right? So for these five hours, your brain will have released like unproportional amounts of dopamine and it's, it's rather unhealthy for you. But then you exit the casino and over the next few days, your brain's dopamine levels gradually start to balance out, to level out, and then you'll be good again, right? You, you, your, your addiction won't, it won't scale, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll be back to the basic unless you go back into the casino again and again and you start going back into the casino and playing the jackpot machine on a regular basis. And at this point, you're becoming addicted, right? You can compare this to our phone, right? Your little phone, your little iPhone is your own little jackpot mas machine. The only difference between the jackpot machine and the iPhone is that you have it in your pocket 24-7 or maybe not when you sleep, but you have it in the pocket 17 hours a day uh, and you know, you can always just pull it up. It takes two seconds to pull up your phone, pull it out of your pocket and start scrolling that Instagram feed and start getting these dopamine rushes. Okay. So if you have an iPhone, I'm not sure what phone you have, but if you have an iPhone, you can go actually go into settings and check under screen time and see how much time you spend on your phone. And I'll sh throw up a screenshot of my phone here. And I believe I spend two to three hours, uh, on daily on my phone. So I have two to three hours daily screen time on average, right? and I actually want to get down that down to an hour. I don't believe I can get it down to an hour because I'll, uh, down below an hour, sorry, because I'll always have to respond to emails and such on my phone. So I think aiming for an hour, having an hour as the daily screen time goal is a good estimate, but right now it's two to three hours, which I think is a little bit too much. But honestly, if you compare it to the average individual, it's nothing, okay? Sometimes I go check my friend's iPhone's screen time just to compare, just to see for fun, how much time they spend on their phone. And like the results, what I've seen is crazy, okay? So it is not unusual for me to see people spend six, seven, even eight hours a day on their phone, right? So they have an average daily screen time of eight hours, right? Now let's assume, let's go back to the 17 hours. Let's assume, you know, we have 24 hours in a day and let's assume you sleep seven hours per day. 
that leaves you with 17 wake hours per day. If you're spending eight hours a day, if you have an average daily screen time of eight hours, that means that you're spending over 40% of your time looking down into your phone. How much is that? Like over 40% of your time, no wonder you're not achieving the, the goals that you want. No, no wonder you're not achieving the things that you want to achieve in life. Like it's, it's that simple. And there's two sides to the coin here, right? Because not only are you spending over 40% of your time looking at your phone, wasting over 40% of your time, not only that, but because of these dopamine releases, because of the dopamine rushes that you get when you use your phone, it actually makes the, let's say, the 55% of the time that you're not using your phone, it makes that 55% of your time even more productive. So it's not like you're just getting 45% less done because you're spending 45% of your time on your phone. No, it's not like you spend the, the 55 other percent of your time equally as effective as someone who's not using their phone because they're not used to this constant dopamine release that you're getting from your phone. So even in that, let's just say, even that in that 50% of your time that you're not using your phone where you can actually be performing beneficial tasks, you're not going to be able to perform these beneficial tasks. You're not going to be able to focus for longer periods of time, right? And that is actually one of the main consequences of these dopamine rushes. And that is the main consequence of using your phone so much is the inability to focus for longer durations of time, right? So personally, you know, what I do, one of the things I do to combat this is that I put my phone on flight mode approximately two hours before I go to sleep every night. And then I don't turn off the flight mode uh, for the first three hours that I'm awake, right? So for when I wake up the next three hours, I do my morning routine. I actually want to create a separate video on my entire morning routine because it's what sets the base of my day. But I do the, my morning routine and I get my morning work in. Uh, so all, most of the tasks that I have to perform during the day, I get it in in the morning while my phone is on flight mode, right? So that is approximately five hours, two in the night, two in the evening before I go to bed and three in the morning after I wake up, my phone is on flight mode. And that just eliminates all of this distractions that I see are the main reasons that my many of my friends are able, unable, sorry, have the inability to focus for longer durations of time. It's crazy to see like so so many of my people, uh, so many of my friends, sorry, complaining about being busy, complaining about having too much work, too much homework in their school, even um, that they don't have the mental capacity to do all of this work. But honestly, like if they just got used to putting their phone in flight mode, if they just got used to spending less time scrolling on Instagram and kind of try to balance out and level out these dopamine rushes, it would help so much. But the main message that I want to convey to you guys through this video is that if you actually want to achieve the goals that you want here in life, and you just don't want, and you don't want to just dwell in your bed for like the, the next 10 years, then I seriously recommend cutting down your social media and your Netflix or in, just in general, your phone usage, okay? Again, if you have an iPhone, you can track screen time. Maybe if you're at seven hours now, go for your first goal should be cutting it down to four hours. Like either way, how much time you're spending now, I really, really recommend trying to focus on cutting it down because once you start getting your brain used to less dopamine rushes from these social media platforms, you'll see that you are gonna get an increasing ability to focus for much longer durations of time and you're gonna be able to get much more work done in a much shorter amount of time, okay guys? so. I hope you got some value off this video. I hope you believe me. I hope you think there's some truth to what I'm actually saying in this video. Personally, I am not scrolling Instagram at all. I am not scrolling Facebook at all. I do watch some YouTube, uh, mostly for educational content. Very occasionally I watch Netflix, but it's very rare, perhaps like uh, an hour a week or something like that uh, on a Sunday. But yeah, I, I, I don't scroll Facebook again. I don't scroll Instagram. I really tend to keep my, my social media usage at like uh, really minimal. I, I basically don't use it only for responding to DMs uh, on Instagram and the messenger platform on Facebook. But as I said, I don't scroll the feeds. Um, so yeah, again, I really, really hope that you take something from this video. I really hope that you'll try to cut down your social media usage. Um, and I, I promise you guys that you'll start to seeing amazing results. You'll start to see amazing changes once you start leveling out these dopamine rushes, okay?